the plumbing's been taken care of to make room for this big S467 turbo underneath the hood of the Ram. Remember, we're doing a fleece performance second gen swap, and that all has to do with the exhaust manifold and placement of the turbo. On all Cummins powered trucks from 2003 and onward, the turbo was mounted on the back between number four and five cylinders. And this is a very restrictive design, especially when you have bolt access for the number five lower bolt. So we're swapping to a manifold that was found on 93 to 02 style trucks where the turbo is mounted in the center of the engine. Now, this design of manifold has a much smoother sweeping transition to allow for better exhaust pulses into the turbocharger. Plus, this aftermarket manifold has a divided inlet for the turbine and altogether that's going to lead to quicker spooling of the turbo, lower exhaust gas temperatures and of course everybody's favorite, more power. You can reuse your old hardware, but to dress things up a little bit and give a little more clamping power, we're using some ARP polished 12-point fasteners to hold the manifold to the cylinder head. With all the bolts in place, we'll torque them to 35 foot-pounds, working from the center outward. We've got the exhaust manifold torqued into place, so the next step is the turbo. Now, these S400s are fairly heavy and awkward, and I don't want to scratch the new powder coat, so we're actually going to install it in three separate pieces. All it takes is removing a large V-band clamp and the compressor cover can lift away. And it's the same for the turbine housing. And we can remove the cartridge and set it aside. We'll place a new gasket onto the manifold and the turbine housing slides over the studs onto the T4 flange and a few nuts hold it in place. If you've ever done a turbo job before, you know how hard this bolt is to get to. But with a cartridge out, Super easy. Instead of the typical paper gasket, Fleece provides a leak-proof O-ring fitting for the turbo drain, and an NPT to AN elbow screws in the oil feed. So we're ready to install the cartridge. And as always, you want the oil feed on top, the drain on the bottom with them as close to vertical as possible. Now, the turbine and compressor wheel on a turbocharger are fairly delicate and they're easy to damage. And if you install this crooked, you could cause it to bind up and you damage the turbo before you even start the truck. So here's how to install them without causing any damage. Basically what I like to do is just slowly and gently turn the compressor wheel back and forth as you slide the cartridge into the turbine housing. Now when it seats, it spins freely so we know that it's not bound up. And we'll connect the V-band and we're good to go. The Dash 10 oil drain line can now be attached underneath the turbo and the insulated oil feed line is installed. The powder coated compressor cover slides over the 67 millimeter wheel and a large V-band holds it in place. The Illusion Cherry passenger side charge pipe slides in and it also clamps into place with a V-band. The 4 inch stainless downpipe slides up from underneath the truck and connects to the turbine discharge with yet another V-band clamp, making for quick removal when we ever need to service anything. Up front, the elbow for the air intake slides onto the compressor cover. We'll follow that up with the intake tube and filter, finishing up the second gen swap.